мы с Флексом пока отдыхаем между подходом, затронули как раз таки тему по поводу того, что заработки на спорте и так далее. Он посмотрел мои фотографии соревновательные, говорит, что хорошая форма, почему ты не уступаешь. Я ему объяснил, что пока такой период, в общем, пока... Пока приоритеты поставлены не так. И вот в связи с этим я хочу спросить у тебя, Флекс, как это было у тебя? Потому что когда мы все смотрели твои особенно ранние видео, создавалось впечатление, что ты очень богатый человек. Я помню эти видео, когда ты приходил в зал, кидал ключи от БМВ своему там, товарищу какому-то. Вот, у тебя была куча тачек, и все было в жизни очень клево, и мы все к этому стремились. Но потом все как-то факт за фактом начал выходить наружу, и все, собственно говоря, узнали, что бодибилдинг – это спорт далеко не высокооплачиваемый, что это такое дорогое хобби, и не каждый может вообще себе это позволить. Я знаю, что у тебя были с этим трудности после твоей карьеры. Я знаю, что ты искал себя, что ты делал бизнес по, по автомобилям, возвращался в боевые искусства. И только сейчас ты вот вернулся опять со своим спортивным питанием и так далее. Вот хочу услышать твои мысли на этот счет по поводу заработка в бодибилдинге. Так ли это, что все это немножко, так скажем, надуто атлетами? И все не так ярко. И как бы ты сам э, в, в данное время выстроил бы свои приоритеты, что ли? You know, as, a, as an amateur inspiring to be a pro bodybuilder, you, you have to continue being smart. Your job enables you to do your hobby. So your job has to be first. You know, when I when I first started competing, I was a police officer. You know, and I had to pay my bills that way. And uh, all while I was an amateur trying to compete and When I won the USA, I was a bouncer at nightclubs, so I had to still go and work, you know. And uh, and, and you know, fortunately, like I said before, by the you know by the grace of God, uh, um, my hobby became my business, where I stopped having to do all these other things, and all I did was train. And I was sponsored by Weeder and Biochem and uh, companies like that, where I could make a living. But until then, I mean, the media only knows about me once I won the USA and that's when I got on uh, the, the, the map of bodybuilding but they don't know that I, I had been training since I was 13 years old working in gas stations and doing whatever I could throwing a paper or whatever I had to do to be able to, to make money and a lot of times I barely had uh, even money to feed myself because I didn't make enough money uh, but it's just you have to just struggle you have to dream but at the end of the day um, what you have to conceive is that You may love this sport, but the sport may not love you back. And that's a hard thing to accept. And if it is that way, then you have to switch your mentality. Okay, I love doing this, but I have to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work. I'm going to pay my bills and take care of myself or my family or whatnot. And I'll continue doing this as a love and a hobby. And it's never going to be a means of making a living. And, and that's just a harsh reality. Uh, listen, I, I, I love football. I wasn't good enough to be a pro. So I love football, but football didn't love me back the same way. So I had to find what loved me also, and luckily I found bodybuilding, and I was able to do okay with it. But you, you have to recognize what your abilities are and what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and sometimes you might not like that answer, but it's reality, you know. It's reality. Итак, друзья, в третье упражнение Flex сказал, где у вас тут machines? Я ему показал machines, и теперь мы сидим вот здесь на вот этой machines. И Flex, одной рукой, двумя руками, что делаем? So, this is like uh, one of my favorite exercises I like to do. Um, again, I'm going to do it unilateral. You can easily do it with both and contract here. But again, I like to concentrate on one body part at a time. So, mm -hmm. similar to what we did here. I'm going to grab it a little higher because it forces me to stretch. Instead of here, I don't get as much stretch out of it. So I grab it a little higher and I lean forward. I'm going to keep my chest on here and I'm going to pull all the way back here instead of raising back and arching this way. So I'm keep my chest here, stretch all the way completely here, engage my, my lat first and contract in here, and then just all the way back. Oh.
интересная, даже я бы сказал, своеобразная техника выполнения упражнений. Берется флекс достаточно высоко, аргументирует это, он это тем, что при таком положении руки максимально растягиваются широчайшие. Но самое главное, это упор, упор груди. То есть флекс наставит на том, чтобы грудь, мы, грудь была максимально прижата. Again, just contract and pulling all the way back. Yeah, good. You'll feel it's on a different angle from using this from using the other machine. Five, I think. <laughs> Six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, all the way back. Ten. Oh, ну честно сказать, не мой вариант выполнения. Я все-таки привык немножко отклоняться, чтобы mm -hmm. чувствовать низ широчайших, mm -hmm. а, но Бог говорит, значит мы делаем. One, remember, contract here first, then here, here first, then here, good. Mm -hmm. Three. Сначала широчайшие, Four. затем руки. Five. Не сказать, что я не чувствую, Six. я чувствую. Но Seven. немножко другие участки. Eight. Nine. Ten. Да, okay. больше нагрузка смещается на верх спины, нежели я акцентировал на, ни... на низ широчайших. Окей. Okay. Uh, maybe... When you want to do a, another 45 or 35? 45 or 35? Okay. Yes. All right, same thing. As you see, I put my foot here and I try to stretch back to give me good leverage on, on mm -hmm. a pull here instead of being closer. Flex обращает внимание на положение обязательно ног. Одна нога у него прилично так сзади. Таким образом он добивается максимального сокращения, максимального растяжения. Ruby, let's go, baby, let's go. And again, you wanna, you wanna try to keep your bicep out of it as much as possible. So again, you don't see me going here first. I'm going here first. As the back gets weaker, 
the biceps wants to start mm -hmm. to do more and you have to mentally say no and continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard, but it's a, that's what I mean before biceps, it's a mental thing. Because it's easier to start pulling here, you know, once uh, the back gets weak, but you have to say no and mentally say, okay, no. Because immediately the bicep wants to go here, so. Ну вот вам, друзья, и э, роль генетики, да, вот небольшая спина, но зато рельефная, этот флекс ленивый, о, ему все досталось где-то генетики, нет. На самом деле, как вы видите, наша тренировка протекает в очень таком чувствительном режиме, а, два упражнения из трех по одной руке, да, говорит, это, это, это говорит о том, что максимальная концентрация, да, флекс никогда не был приверженцем а, больших весов, Никогда не ставил рекорды по поднятию тяжестей, а, но ментальная концентрация – это mm -hmm. его. Yeah. Now, it's time to go eat. <laughs> ну что, после показательной тренировки спины а, приехали мы перекусить. А, я предлагал русскую кухню флексу, но он отказался, я говорю, что ты тогда будешь? Он сказал, пицца, поэтому мы сейчас ждем yeah. пиццу. Pizza, <laughs> вот. pizza, pizza, pizza. И а, в таком месте, конечно, хочется с тобой поговорить о питании. Ты знаешь, в твоих особенно ранних видео создавалось впечатление, что тебе все дается легко, что я особо не держу диету, но самое, что меня до глубины души потрясло, и до сих пор я под впечатлением почему-то, когда я вижу тебя, я вспоминаю про это, что ты говорил, что ты не сильно заморачивался по питанию, и что твоя предсоревновательная диета была курица и картофель фри. Вот, поэтому расскажи, как было это тогда, насколько это было тяжело, либо нет, и как это сейчас. Вот. Ну, сейчас, я так понимаю, так как мы ждем пиццу, не особо ты паришься. Вот. Как это было тогда, и еще я помню, у тебя был момент, когда ты говорил, что когда ты сам уделял внимание своей диете, у тебя дела шли лучше, потом ты обращался к диетологам, и у тебя дела шли хуже. Расскажи про это. Yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, my, my diet is, uh, is really strict, but what I, I like to do, and I don't talk about this too often, but I, I like to throw people off. So maybe uh, if I knew I was going to be in public, I would diet really hard, and I wouldn't have any cheat days. So when I would go in public and on camera, okay, I can eat a pizza. So everybody would think, oh, okay, he cheats on his diet, he's not that serious. But when I go back home, I'd be very serious about my diet and everything. So. For me, I, I very seldom had cheat days, and then also you have to understand, I went zero carbs for, for months at a time. So when I would have like a pizza or a hamburger, it was nothing extraordinary for me because I would go over a month with no carbs whatsoever. So that way I could balance my, my diet off and everything like that. Now, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm 50 years old. You know, I, I, I pretty much eat what I want, but I, I understand I can only do that so often. So normally when I'm at home, I have a very strict uh, uh, diet and everything that I go by, but I do it that way so when I can travel, I can eat what I want. I don't have to be restricted because um, honestly, when, I, when I'm dieting, I'm not extremely happy because I'm eating for nutritional value, not for taste. So who's happy? You want to eat what you like, it makes you feel better. So when I'm, when I'm traveling, what I try to do is I eat for, for taste, therefore I can feel great, I can be more active, and I can interact with the, uh, uh, the people and my fans. So I try not to diet too harshly when I'm actually uh, traveling and everything like that. As far as my dietitians, you know, I, I've always been an athlete since I was younger. Um, when I was training in martial arts, I had a martial artist, I had a, uh, an instructor uh, that helped me do the thing. So I'm, I'm very good at following instructions. Um, what I understand also is when you're a competitor, sometimes you have distorted vision, meaning you may think one thing is one, but it's not really that. So you need eyes outside looking at you to tell you what is what. So my dietist, and I, I work with Chad uh, Nichols, um, who I contribute to a lot of my success in bodybuilding. No, I pretty much worked with Chad Nichols my whole career um, as a professional and you know I, I learned a lot from him and one of the interesting things about Chad was uh, he didn't consider himself a guru and he didn't consider himself 
uh, that he made me who I was. He he was just a part of a a uh, a team that did it. You know uh, what I don't understand about a lot of the um, the dietologists now they they call themselves gurus and um, as if they know everything. And my question is, okay, if you're an all-seeing guru, how come you can't make yourself be a champion? How come you can't develop a diet where you can be the champion and you walk on stage? So the relationship chat and I had is he helped me to understand that I needed to learn my body and elbow to help him help me because he's not with me 24 hours a day and he doesn't know how I feel. He doesn't know how I feel when I eat this and when I eat that. So one of the bigger things that he taught me is that I needed to learn my, bo my body and how I feel at certain times of the day. And then I would give him that information. He would come up with a diet more or less for me. So it was a team that was coherent that we had to work together and able to produce this product instead of him just telling me what to do and that was it. So um, and we became great friends after that, you know, and still are to this day. So for me, it was a success story. And I don't think that I would have been able to um, achieve um, what I did as easily if I didn't have them in my uh, corner. Flex. Как многие говорят, бодибилдинг – спорт иллюзий. И ты а, был яркий, а, ярким примером этому утверждению, а, потому что выглядел ты невероятно, но твой вес, он был достаточно маленький. Насколько я знаю, а, в районе 100 кг даже ты весил. Свои ранние соревнования ты выигрывал при весе, я помню, что это около 92 кг. А, вот. Мне вот интересно... А, был ли ты уже на пике своей карьеры, был ли ты заинтересован в том, чтобы добавлять в весе, либо ты работал только над картинкой? Потому что это очень важно, а, потому что не секрет, что те атлеты, которые добавляют в весе из года в год, они как будто работают на перспективу. То есть они знают, что кондиции у них не самые лучшие сейчас, но зато они прогрессируют в весе, чтобы потом этот вес... А, так сказать, уплотнить, чтобы уже была красивая картинка. Вот, у тебя же вес всегда был маленький. Был бы ли ты заинтересован а, уже на пике своей карьеры в, в том, чтобы увеличить свой вес, собственно, именно добавить мясо, либо ты работал только вот над отражением в зеркале? No, honestly, I, I really focused on trying to get bigger because at the time it was led to believe that the reason why I wasn't winning is because I wasn't big as Ronnie. Um, so being that Ronnie was number one, I, I was, we were all chasing the image that he was. Um, what I've learned now is that was a huge mistake for me because that wasn't my gift uh, to be the biggest person on stage. My gift was uh, uh, my round muscle bellies and my condition and small waist and joints. So, the first part of the question, yeah, I, I tried to get bigger and bigger, um, but I, I, I've never been a big eater. Uh, for me, um, eating um, 7,000 calories a day is what I got up to. That was always a, a task for me. It wasn't easy uh, doing that. So because I'm naturally not a big eater, I'm naturally not a big person, I never had the huge appetite where I got really obese or fat or anything like that. So it was probably more or less a blessing for me that I always had a small appetite. Следующий вопрос достаточно, возможно, будет такой неприятный, колючий по поводу использования синтола и вообще использования каких-то э, других масел и так далее. Тебя не раз в этом обвиняли, дескать, в руках, в плечах и так далее. Э, дай, пожалуйста, свой официальный ответ. Что же это все-таки масло, генетика, может быть, э, ты скажешь, что в принципе профессионалы все э, используют э, все методы для того, чтобы стать лучше. Интересен твой ответ. No, I, 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 I always get that still, and so the facts are, and, and one thing interesting about me is, I think it's a newer generation of followers and bodybuilders, right? One thing they, they forget about me is I'm, I'm probably known to be one of the most honest bodybuilders uh, on the planet. I mean, I, I wrote a book about my life and I told all the most horrific and bad things I ever done. So for me to be that honest about who I was as a child and 
and being suicidal at 13 years old, how many times I tried to kill myself when I was younger. I tried to kill myself continuously up into my 30s. For me to talk about such horrific things, uh, being sexually molested and homeless and uh, not having money, why would I lie about something so trivial? It doesn't make sense to me. So what I said, and, and still what is a fact, thank you, is yeah, I tried Synthroll before. I tried Synthroll back then, I think it was like uh, 98 or something like this. It was a big fat, so I tried it. Actually, it was more, it was more damaging to my physique than, than positive. And uh, I think I tried it twice or something like that in my, um, my shoulders and my biceps, and I didn't use it anymore because it actually took away my definition and everything. So what's, inter what's interesting now is people still accuse me of, of using a thing because my arms look freakish, but if, if they were really historians of the sport, they would know since I was an amateur, I mean, back when I was just called Skinny Kenny, all I had was biceps and triceps. That's just my gift. Like, this guy here probably always had calves since he was a kid. So, it's interesting that people think that I would still need to do those things at the age of 50. What do I actually have to prove? Uh, I don't take any of the drugs I used to take back uh, then. I mean, you know, Synthroid wasn't the only drug I tried when I was younger. I tried a lot of drugs that I no longer do use. So why, I don't understand why people would think uh, having big arms would define who I am now as a 50-year-old man. I mean, fuck, I, I got to be out of my mind uh, to even want to do those things that I did back then. So, you know, but again, I think it's more so the, the, the younger generation and, and uh, that, that, that look at me and think of those things right now, but I could care less. Like I said earlier, I don't care about being big. I just want to be healthy, uh, period. Size doesn't mean anything to me. I did that already. So I don't have anything to prove to anybody anymore. Uh, one of the other interesting things is, is back in the 90s, I can probably name off about 60 competitors uh, who competed against me and who were beneath me who use the same thing as I do. But like I said, I'm just brutally honest. It is what it is, you know, I, I don't have anything to hide. So, because I'm so honest and I admit a lot of the things I did, good and bad, uh, people have it locked in their minds that I, I still have to do that. But I, I, I do understand, because now there's a new era where, where guys, all they do is they don't train hard, they just shoot and they inject. So, today's generation of bodybuilders, because I have all these round muscle bellies and it looks crazy, they think, okay, you must do it too because other people do that, but I, I understand that. But if you go back in time and look at my photos of uh, even back in uh, 93, uh, before these drugs were even invented, go back even further and look at uh, when I won uh, Mr. California uh, back in uh, 89. I, that's all I had was big uh, round biceps and triceps. So the other thing is, it's funny to me, uh, if you look at anybody who currently uses this quote unquote drug Synthrol, their, their muscles don't move. You look at my muscle, it completely moves. It expands, it goes down. There's no lumps. It's, it's movable. My tricep, it moves, but I get it. When you look at it, it's just round. Uh, so people are like, oh, that can't be real. It's real. It moves. You can see even the striations in uh, my shirt, but at the end of the day, you know, I, 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 I do get annoyed uh, with people saying that it does. It pisses me off. It makes me want to punch them in the mouth. Uh, to be honest, but I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, you know what, man, it's actually a compliment. Um, it's actually a compliment because at the age of 50, you still look uh, freakish, your arms still look freakish. So take it as a compliment because, because it is uh, other people, if they have to do something uh, to make themselves look that way. But you know, for me, I also look at it as, as they're robbing me from my, my natural talent, you know, uh, I'm not giving me the accolade, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is, and like I said, I, I'm not here to have to prove something to somebody at 50 years old. Uh, I'm 50, uh, I got to honestly tell you, any person who's 50 years old and they're an idiot and still injecting themselves with different things, man, you really can't be freaking happy. <laughs> I mean, you, you just can't be happy at all. Uh, if that's what you have to do. Um, I'm more concerned on, on just being healthy. I mean, I have a kidney transplant, you know, uh, and I'll probably have to have another kidney transplant because my disease doesn't go away. So for me to jeopardize my life to have big arms, yeah, you've got issues if that's what you think uh, about me. So. Well, you're going to talk about health. 
К здоровью рано или поздно приходит любой спортсмен. Ты, кстати, отлично выглядишь, свои 50 лет. Но у тебя была трансплантация почки и, возможно, понадобится еще. И, насколько я помню, ты говорил, что это не связано со спортом, не связано с употреблением каких-то препаратов и так далее. То есть это наследственная проблема. Расскажи вот про это, насколько критична ситуация, насколько тебя это беспокоит, как это выражается. Вот про это, пожалуйста. Right now I feel great. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, some statistical facts about um, a transplant. You know, I, I had my transplant back in 2000, 2003. Was it? I think 2003. Um, but yeah, 2003. So supposedly a, nor a kidney normally lasts about uh, seven years. So I'm a little bit extended on the seven-year part. Um, as far as my disease, it's not hereditary. Actually, they, they still haven't figured out how it happens. Um, it's, it's, it's a fairly new um, disease, meaning it's only about uh, 30 or 40 years old. So there's, a lot of not, a, um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, information on it. Uh, health and science wasn't at it. At, at its uh, crest where it is now, so they can't go back and, and resume my, my grandparents and see if they had the disease or not. You know, I know my, my grandparents uh, had died from various different uh, organs failing, but disease that hadn't been discovered uh, at that time. So the, the last time I talked to them, which hasn't been, probably been uh, maybe six years, I asked them those questions was, uh, at that time, it's, it's the most rare and deadliest kidney disease known to men. Uh, there's no cure, and 90% uh, of the people who have this disease end up dying from it unless they get a kidney to, uh, transplant. I'll let you say that part because then I'll say more that's even more. So what they told me back in 99 when I found out I had this disease, they said, you know, um, uh, I think I was around 36 or something like this. They told me that, you know, uh, that there's no cure for it and that I wouldn't make it out of my 40s uh, before I died if I didn't have a kidney transplant. So at that time I knew that I, it was a serious situation, but like I said before, it was just hard to believe that I was sick when I looked at uh, a picture of health. But what I asked him immediately, I said, you know, is this disease, is it because of my utilization of sports technology drugs, is it because of my career that I chose and the drugs I have to use to, to look this way? And, At that time, they told me 100% no, um, that there's, there's kids uh, that have the same disease that are, you know, 9, 10, 13 years old, and uh, they're on their second and third kidney from the same disease. So that helped me to understand that it, it wasn't something that I did. It's just for whatever reason I was chose to do this. You know, it's, you know this disease and, and all diseases are bigger than me. You have people who have, you know, who's died from cancer. Лекс, сейчас вопросы из Инстаграма. Mm -hmm. uh, очень много похожих вопросов. Во-первых, uh, очень uh, все низкий поклон тебе передают привет. И отвечай, пожалуйста, коротко, потому что вопросов много. Постараемся так uh, затронуть разные темы. Очень много по поводу тренировок. Uh, как руки, как uh, спину качать. Uh, очень много по поводу сплита. Вот uh, расскажи свой стандартный сплит. Ты делаешь все отдельно. Как ты советуешь вообще новичкам, либо при подготовке к соревнованиям? I've been in martial arts uh, geez, since I was uh, nine years old. I started fighting when I was nine, so I, I fought all the way through my bodybuilding career also. Um, when I won the California State Championship back in 89, I, went that, I won that show on Saturday, and that Sunday I was at a tournament fighting again for the uh, California State Championship and, and fighting. So, you know, flexibility was something that just came to me uh, as a child because I stayed in martial arts. And I continued fighting even after I turned pro in martial arts and stuff like that. So it was just something normal. But I don't want to take credit for the splits because it wasn't my ideal. If, uh, if anyone is old enough and remember, there was another competitor named Phil, um, Phil um, Hill. 
he was a professional competitor, massive legs. He was the first person I ever seen did the splits on stage as a professional, and I had an opportunity of meeting him. And he said, you know, we were talking, and he knew about my martial arts background. He goes, man, you should do the splits on stage. I'm like, that's oh, stupid. It's boring. Who wants to see that? He's like, no, I do the splits on stage. You know, it's unique to see someone muscular with flexibility like that. You should try it one day. And uh, it was some show I was doing, I think, when I won the, um, the uh, California State Championship. I did the splits on stage, and everybody thought it was a real big deal or whatever. But it was it's something natural. I was just flexible from being in martial arts uh, for such a long time. Следующий вопрос. Во сколько начинается твой день, какой твой любимый завтрак? Ну вообще по поводу твоего распорядка дня многие интересуются. Я этот вопрос дополню. То есть когда ты не в разъездах, когда ты дома, в основном чем ты занимаешься, какие у тебя может быть увлечения. Я знаю, что ты любишь тюнинг автомобилей. Возможно, это тоже занимает часть твоего времени. Вот, пожалуйста, распорядок дня. When I'm at home, I... I try to give my, uh, my kids all my attention. You know, my, my son plays football in high school. Uh, my day normally starts just like any dad. You know, I wake up, I get my, my daughter dressed and I comb her hair. Uh, you know, I wake my son up, uh, take my daughter to school, come back and take my son to school. And um, I'm one of the coaches on the football team. And I go and I help out coaching. and. You know, I, I try to fit my workout in right around um, between 11 and 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And the rest of the day, when I'm when I'm not having to work, I try to make myself available for whatever my kids need me to do. Because when I'm away, like now, I can't be of any assistance to them. So when I'm at home, I, I, I pretty much try to conform myself around either doing something with them or just actually just sitting in a house. If they need me, they can call me or they, if I need to do something for them. But I'm pretty much like a creature of habit. I like to do the same thing every day. You know, yeah, I, I love cars and all that stuff, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of moving out of that phase because, you know, now it's my, uh, my kids' uh, chance to, to spread their wings and fly. So, you know, I need to focus on what, what ne what's necessary to help them um, try to achieve their dreams. Следующий вопрос. Какие твои любимые методы повышения интенсивности тренинга? Может быть, негати негативные повторения, может быть, дроп-сеты, может быть, суперсеты? I think today's athletes and bodybuilding makes it so complex. You know, they, they, they think way too much. Uh, listen, it doesn't matter whether you superset, uh, whether you uh, do a... Uh, this movement or that movement. It doesn't matter whether you believe in eccentric movements. The point is, is get in there and, and just kill it in a gym. It, it's nothing that's going to outdo hard ass work on a consistent basis. That's the most important thing. I, you know, people all now are they're writing down, you know, how they do this or or they, they need to do this drop set, or so-and-so has a special workout, I need to try that. Listen, at the end of the day, nothing's gonna outdo hard-ass work and being consistently doing it. That's how you're gonna get your gains. It doesn't really matter. Listen, at the end of the day, if that works for you, then go do it, All right? If, if supersetting works for you, go do it. You know, if eccentric working out does it for you, go do it. Just go do it. Just freaking go do it and stop worried about this next great workout or so-and-so has another great workout plan. Listen, it's just all about hard ass work and ain't no freaking way around it. You're not gonna find it in a bottle. You're not gonna find it in a freaking pen. You know, you're not gonna find it in a needle. It comes from your heart and it comes from perseverance and just drive and mentality. And that's the reason why the success is so limited on bodybuilders succeeding because they don't have the, that, that, that foundation of just dedication, perseverance, and just not scared of going in the gym and putting down some hard ass work, period. Ain't gonna find it in a bottle. Simple as that. Хочется задать какой-то вопрос не на тему уже тренировок. Вот, допустим, я считаю незаурядный вопрос. Расскажи за какой-нибудь свой поступок, за который тебе стыдно. Listen, uh... What I've, what I've learned is 
everything that I've done from the first day I took my first breath, whether it was good or whether it was bad, whether it was good for me or bad for me, whether it was evil or not, uh, everything has formed, formed me into the person that I am today. And if you take away any of those things, good or bad, embarrassing or, or not, I wouldn't be the person that I am now. So I've learned to make, uh, to take the lemons that I've had in life and make lemonade out of them. Uh, I've, turned, I, I've learned that the bad experiences that I've been a part of, created or been involved in, that they're a learning tool that I have to learn from. So there's always, no matter what the scenario is, there's always something that you can learn from it. So there is no bad experiences. Uh, the only bad experience for me is something that you do and you continue doing and you haven't learned from it. That's a bad experience. But anything that you've gone through, good or bad, that's made you a better person or the person who you are, that's a positive experience. Ну что, друзья, вот этот замечательный денек подошел к концу. На улице уже ночь. Мы и поели, и поездили по пробкам, и потренировались. Что я для себя вынес, что этот человек не соответствует тому типу, к которому все привыкли его причислять. Это такой высокомерный красавчик, который стоит на сцене и считает, что только он победитель. Это действительно человек, который много, многое что переосмыслил в своей жизни, через многое что прошел. И вот эта мудрость и опыт, она произвела на меня впечатление. Спасибо вам, ребят, и спасибо, Флекс. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Thank brother. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and if any of more of your viewers on Instagram they have questions, we can go between our Instagram and answer mm -hmm. them. It's no question, no problem. Please also follow me on my Instagram, which is official Flex Wheeler. I also have a YouTube page where I do a lot of videos. Also, please follow me and subscribe on my YouTube page, which is the official Flex Wheeler. Peace. I'll see you guys soon. We'll see you soon.